adhesion and cohesion. Adhesion, think of adhesives. When you're using an adhesive, what are you doing? You're sticking one thing to another. So it's about water sticking to other things. Cohesion, if you're talking about a cohesive class, um, our chemistry class is cohesive, we work well together. So cohesion is about how water relates to itself. In the liquid state, the molecules have too much energy to become locked into fixed pattern. Okay, they've got a lot of energy. Numerous temporary hydrogen bonds between molecules make water an extraordinarily sticky fluid. So this is between the water molecules and this is what we're talking about with cohesion. So the forces here make water stick to itself and you can see here there's some nice little pictures um, of the water molecules and it's about them being attracted to one another. Because it is polar, water is cohesive, as we've already said, it sticks to itself. And also adhesive, it can stick to other materials. And of course, those other materials have to have some polarity to it. Oops. So you can see here, this is one of the pracs that we did. We did the capillary tube. And the reason the water climbs up the capillary tube is it's almost a Spider-Man type motion. It will attract to itself, then it attracts to the glass, and it attracts to itself, it attracts to the glass, it attracts to the self, it attracts to the glass. So it almost climbs up the capillary tube. This is so important in nature because this is one of the ways that really tall trees can get the water going up um, to the leaves. You can see here, um, when we're looking at a meniscus, this is why meniscus forms in a um, burette or in a measuring cylinder. It is because the adhesion forces are grabbing onto the glass. It's attracted to the glass because glass is a polar sub uh, substance. These cohesive forces are here making a nice round um, concave, I guess, shape because the adhesion forces, the attraction to the glass are greater than the attraction to each other so it's going to grab onto the glass as much as it can and that's the same reason it's climbing up here it's grabbing onto the glass but at the same time you've got those cohesive forces which are creating this nice boundary this is what also causes the droplets that you can see here these are the cohesive forces so when we put the um we did the prac where we put the water droplets on a piece of plastic, which was non-polar, and the water formed these perfect tiny little droplets because the cohesive forces of water were stronger than the attraction to the plastic. So it created this beautiful little round droplet. However, when we put it on glass, it spread out. It formed a sort of, it didn't bead as this would be called. It spread out, and this is because it's attracted to the glass. So capillary action, the tendency of the water to rise in narrow tubes. Plants use it to move water from their roots to their leaves. And it's the movement of blood through tiny vessels in the bodies of some animals as well. And here's my picture here of the tree, which is allowing um, its transpiration. Other things cause it as well. But um, capillary action is a large reason why the water can get up the tree. So you should be able to have a read of your textbook now and be able to answer a couple of those questions. So questions three to five. So water also has a high surface tension. This means that the molecules on the surface of the liquid are not surrounded by like molecules on all sides. So we're talking about the surface of water. Here, or sorry, here, the water molecules are attracted to other water molecules. So there's no drama there. But what happens when you get to the top of a surface is that you've got air at the top of that surface. So water has got the cohesive forces attracted to it itself here and also to other water molecules inside, but it doesn't have an attraction to the outside. So they're much more attracted to their neighbors on the surface. You can see here that they form this well, bubble type shape, um, droplet type shape, because the molecules are attracted inside to one another, so they pull each other in nice and tightly, and it forms this circular or this droplet type shape. 
It allows the formation of water droplets and waves. And you can see here, I love this picture. It's a beautiful water droplet. Here's another one, beautiful water droplet. It also allows insects to walk on water. And this has got a lot to do with forces and physics. But basically, because if we look at that previous diagram, these are holding on very tightly here. So it almost creates like a, a, a very light plastic film. And we did this in class in the prac. We were able to float a... Um, a, we did it with a pin, but you can do it with a paper clip as well, on water. Of course, when we change what's called the surface tension by adding some detergent, that disappeared. You often see little insects walking on top of water, and that's why they can do it. Um, when we added the detergent, it upset what's called the surface tension. We're talking about high surface tension here. And by adding the um, detergent, it creates or makes the means that the detergent gets involved and gets in between these so it basically breaks up this nice little tight um, cohesive bonding okay so this is basically what we did in the prac which was just adding droplets of water um, to a plastic cup it doesn't really matter what type of cup but what you'll see happen um, because of surface tension is a bubble of water occurring at the top you can add quite a bit of water um, and because of all of those particles that are grabbing onto each other, um, cohesiveness, um, it'll create a bubble on the top, and that's how droplets are formed. I'll do a 20 cent trick next term too. I might do that on the video. Oh, cool. <laughs>